Cricket Life Stories with me, Neil Kagram, and today we're joined by Boyd Rankin. Boyd, thank you for your time. Yeah, cheers, cheers. Um, so let's dive straight into it. Born in Londonderry, Northern Ireland. Tell me where your love of cricket first stemmed from. Uh, it would have to be from in terms of my dad. Uh, my dad played for like the local, um, in terms of like a local team there. Um, and yeah, I, I probably started playing when I was about seven, seven, eight years old. Um, it was, it, yeah, it's quite strange really, but uh, it's quite a big like cricket, um, I suppose, like area, like where I'm from. Um, and like everybody used to play cricket. Um, and yeah, I, I sort of had the love from it from, from like, quite a young age, um, through my dad, through like going to the cricket and, and like watching him. Um, like we sort of we sort of loved like most sports like we used to watch everything on TV um, and yeah we just loved loved like most sports but it was sort of cricket that that sort of was the main one for me from a young age um, I was probably that's slightly bigger than than like most people at that age and uh, I felt that I felt like it like suited in terms of what I wanted to do and your siblings also were talented cricketers mm -hmm. your brother also played uh, international cricket for Ireland yeah. and your siblings also, your other two siblings? Yeah, uh, David's played a full and couple of full internationals uh, in terms of T20 for Ireland and my, my other brother Robert played with me at the Under-19 World Cup in 2004. So, uh, Talented family. Yeah, and my sister plays as well. Um, she plays for like a local club. She's played a little bit of like provincial stuff as well. So yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of just in the family really. And what was your local club back home? Uh, my local club is 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 like Breedy Cricket Club. Um, I've sort of I've played there like right away from the very start, right away until I I sort of made the move uh, over over here. So um, yeah, like it's a quite a quite a family uh, like in terms of quite a, like a of like a family friendly club, um, and everybody's made really welcome there. And uh, we had we had quite a lot of good 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 like young cricketers come through that club. And I read somewhere that you, were, you know, they fast tracked you into men's cricket at the age of 14, 15. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure when, but yeah, it was around 13, 14. I, I was, I was playing my first team debut. Um, the height and the pace back then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was probably, yeah, I was still, I was still pretty tall. Um, maybe not as quick back then, um, but yeah, it was obviously like a great experience for me to play, to play in that league. It was quite strong. Um, so basically, each club side had a first class cricketer. So whenever I was growing up. Uh, we had um, people uh, like Cameron Akmal, um, uh like Ridley Jacobs. There was quite a lot of good cricketers that used to come and play. So to be able to play against those uh, players, it obviously helped me as well. So um, it was a good start for me. Um, and at the same time, I was sort of playing in like the Ireland underage setups as well. Yeah. So I read also again that you were selected. Um, for Ireland under under 13s yeah. and played all the way through. Yeah. Where was that kind of talent spotted? Was it just through your club side? Did you go for trials, etc.? Uh, yeah, from what I can remember, it, basically, yeah, through my club, um, and then basically each each like province had like an underage team as well. So we'd normally uh, go to like a festival type thing where each province would play against one another, and then the, and then and then like the Ireland team would would, would be picked from that. So. Uh, yeah, that, that's sort of where I was spotted, uh, as he would want to put it. So, yeah, through that, um, I sort of made my way up through all like all all those under underage teams. Yeah. And then, would it be fair to say that your kind of break came at under nineteen level, um, where you kind of your talent as such was spotted um, by English counties, and you were invited to trials. Um, yeah. You tried at Middlesex. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Talk me through that kind of. Uh, well, basically, it, it probably so. There was a period I, I was playing for Ireland under under 19s at the at the 2004 World Cup, and uh, to be honest, I actually didn't do that well. Um, I wasn't bowling particularly well. Uh, 2004, so the, like I actually made my, my senior Ireland debut of the summer of 2003, um, and that's where I got spotted by a few counties. Um, the likes of Essex, Northlands, uh, Middlesex, obviously, as well. Um, they were all sort of watching me um, and sort of invited me over to, to, to actually have trials. Um, so you trialed with all those counties that you mentioned? Uh, I, I didn't actually trial with any of them. Um, it, it got to a point where it was sort of the back end of that summertime and I was just about to start university. Um, 
and uh, Middlesex just offered me a contract. Uh, I hadn't I hadn't met anybody. Um, I'd spoke to a few people on the phone. Uh, Jason Pulley at the time was the second eleven coach. Um, I'd spoke to him, and basically, yeah, they, I think I think they probably realised there was a few counties interested, and I didn't really get the opportunity to go over and trial. So they, they probably took a punt on me and uh, uh, signed me for that next summer. Um, in, in 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 like between whenever I was studying, so yeah, that that's basically how it happened. Um, and from your perspective, um, the Irish influence at Middlesex with Ed Joyce, Owen Morgan, was that kind of a fact in your decision making? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Like I think that was the main. Like I think I think that was the main decision really for me was obviously Ed Joyce, Owen Morgan was there, um, and and like like there was that connection. So it just made it really comfortable for me to actually. To actually to go into that environment, um, and did yeah. you know them from before? Or was yeah, well, obviously I knew Owen uh, quite well because we had played a lot of like underage uh, in 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 like terms of cricket together, um, and I obviously knew of of like Ed as well. I, I probably didn't know him as much, obviously because he had been based across the water for a while, but. Yeah, it was obviously just that like Irish connection that really uh, helped me to like make that decision. And how would you summarise that kind of you know that your Middlesex um, career, your start in England, such you didn't break into the first team, but was it just more kind of you know honing your skills, um, gaining that kind of second eleven experience around, around pro? Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Um, it was it was sort of at a time where I didn't really understand what I needed to do to be like a pro cricketer. Um, I probably wasn't in the right shape, uh, like in terms of fitness wise. Uh, and it, it sort of like I sort of learned a lot through those couple of summers, uh, in, like in terms of training with their fitness trainers in the gym. Um, what I was probably what nineteen twenty at that point. So I probably hadn't really done a lot of gym up up to that point. Um, it wasn't something that I I had really been too keen on, like to be honest, um, as as like a young cricketer. But like looking back on it now, it, like it probably helped me like a lot in terms of moving forward to to sort of have that have that base of of like fitness and like being able to know what I needed to do like day in day out to be allowed to to actually play cricket. And then you got your opportunity um, at Derby. How did that come about? Uh, it was quite an interesting and controversial story, really. Um, so basically, Mike Hendrick, who was involved with the Ireland setup, um, he was a bowling coach at Derby. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. and uh, he was doing a bit of bowling stuff with like with like the Ireland setup as well during that two thousand and six winter. So. Or sorry, the 2005 winter, um, and I was at university in like Newport, Shropshire, which wasn't that far away from Derby. So we'd sort of got chatting, and he was like, "Listen, if you need to have a bowl at some point, just sort of pop, pop up and have a bowl um, at in terms in terms of like the indoor centre there." So I was like, "Yeah, that, that'd be great," because um, I didn't really have like much facilities around like the university to actually do that. So um, yeah, I, I popped up. Uh, one day and had a bowl. Uh, Dave Houghton was there as well, watching. There was a, there was a few other players there, but um, I had a bowl, um, and they were really they were really impressed from what they could see. So it was sort of it was at a point of my career where um, I was obviously at Middlesex for a few years. I I sort of signed another uh, deal to go back the next summer, but. I didn't really feel I was going to get anywhere in terms of Middlesex. The, that that winter, they had signed a lot of like Copac players, uh, and especially like bowlers. Um, and I felt I did reasonably well over the two years I was at Middlesex, um, but I, I obviously didn't get that opportunity uh, to play first team. So um, I just I just felt it was probably the, like the right time to sort of move move to another club. Um, and obviously have more opportunities to actually play like, first team cricket. And your time at Derby, um, you were played with several injuries. Mm -hmm. Must have been frustrating that you get your opportunity to play first first team cricket yeah. and then your body 
let you down or such? Was it just through growth, you know? Yeah, I think it was just at that point where it was we're probably still growing. I was, I was still trying to learn my body, trying to get strong and, and fit. And I think, I suppose it happens to quite a lot of younger bowlers these days where they go through periods where they do pick up injuries. And I think it's that's part of the learning process as well. Your body has to become, become like robust in terms of what it has to do. And I probably wasn't up to the task at that point. Um, even though I felt I, I came on a lot at that stage, working working with like Mike Hendrick, um, and I, like I didn't play a lot of first team cricket that that first season I was with them. But I still felt I'd like gained a lot from that first um, season, and uh, I'd improved a lot. Um, and then obviously going that that was sort of. 2006, moving into 2007, my my second season at Derby, I it was coming off the back of the World Cup uh, 07. I, I actually started the season really well uh, in terms of red ball cricket, and then I managed to pick up another injury. So, yeah, it was obviously really frustrating um, for me um, at that time because I felt I I just sort of got my foot in the door playing first team cricket, and I felt I was doing well. So, yeah, it was obviously difficult to to sort of take at that point but yeah I, I believe everything happens for a reason and uh, that was sort of my process of and my uh, stage up uh, at that time um, I still felt a l like I learned a lot from it. And then the decision then to move on and make this place your home, Edgebaston, Warwickshire, yeah. how did that decision come about? Influence of Alan Donald, the great Alan Donald. Yeah, yeah, he was a massive factor in it. Um, I he was the coach at the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he was the fast bowling coach. Yeah. Uh, he was he was actually just appointed whenever. Uh, so Ashley Giles was the guy who actually signed me here at Warwickshire. Um, I had spoke to the previous coach um, just before that, just to get a feel of the place. But um, yeah, I, I I sort of got to a point where I felt. Um, it was too. It was too good to turn down. Really, obviously, it was a massive club, like like one of the biggest clubs in the, in in terms of in terms of England. So, it was great to get that opportunity to have um, to have Ashley Giles say, "Listen, we want to sign you." Uh, Alan Donald's going to be the bowling coach. So, uh, yeah, it was it was a no brainer really from my point of view to to actually make that move. And um, I felt I felt at the time it. it it, it like was the right thing to do. So that was 2007. You mentioned there also the World Cup, which you got selected for um, yeah. in the Caribbean. One of the famous victories against Pakistan you were involved in. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. How was that? Uh, that that whole what well, we were there experience, for experience emotion. Oh, it was it was everything really. That those those whole six weeks that we were there was just uh, it was just like surreal. Um, we never, never dreamt that we would do so well. Um, uh, even though we sort of knew ourselves that if we got the right conditions and uh, we sort of like, like performed on the day, that we could, we could beat anybody because we had a good side back then. And obviously, that Pakistan. Uh, well, the game before that, with the like the Zimbabwe game, which we tied, um, that was like massive as well. Because if we had lost that, then we might not have st still got through. So. That that first game sort of gave us the confidence in the World Cup that we could like do well at it and like we could like compete here. So yeah, that that uh, that St Paddy's Day 07, yeah, well, it's probably still up there as one of the best moments of in terms of my career. Um, I can't really remember too much after the game. Uh, we uh, we, uh, we headed up to the north of the island to to see all the all like the supporters there and. Uh, yeah, it was uh, like 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 we partied pretty hard, yeah. And you ended up the leading wicket taker for Ireland in that tournament. It must have given you a lot of confidence. Yeah, it was probably to the perform in international cricket. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I think so. It was, uh, like, it was obviously massive for my confidence. It was massive just to be able to know that I can compete at, at that level. Um, I always knew that I had uh, like the right set of skills to actually do that obviously I'm tall uh, which obviously helps as well but um, yeah it was obviously a massive uh, turning point in in terms of my career um, uh, like playing in, in in that World Cup and I think 
yeah, probably going into it, uh, I will probably owe a lot to like Eddie Brill, who was the head coach of Ireland at the time. He I hadn't really played a lot uh, leading into that uh, tournament, so he like put a lot of faith in me to actually play that World Cup. And well, the, I think the squad was picked the back end of the summer of '06, so we had all winter to actually like uh, work on our fitness and work on things to actually go into that World Cup to be like really prepared. So um, yeah, like that was really good, and uh, yeah, it was it was surreal playing against all all the best players in the world and managed to pick up a few wickets at the same time. Um, yeah, it was obviously like a great experience. And you also played in a couple of other like, major tournaments for Ireland, the 2009 T20 World Cup and the 2011 50 over World Cup. Um, how do those two tournaments compare to the 07? Um, it's, it's probably just a bit different because obviously 07 was the first, uh, the first tournament that I played in um, and there wasn't really a lot of like um, in terms of people like watching us at that point so once once 07 was done it felt there was a lot more people watching us and it felt that we had to like perform a bit better uh, during that during those like 09 010 011 like world cups so it's sort of like we we obviously we wanted to try and keep uh, like winning games against like, like against big teams and that sort of puts you on the map then they try because ultimately like we wanted to try and play like test cricket but like we wanted to be a full member to to play cricket like non-stop like and that was the first part of that um and yeah that first one it's hard to like top that just because of the situation of it but yeah the, the, obviously that 09 one especially because it, it was based in england as well was great because there were so many fans came over from Ireland, um, and yeah, yeah, it was a great experience to be in as well. And 2011, you beat England. Yeah. Nile O'Brien, 113 off 63 deliveries. Yeah. Smash it to all parts again. Another special, special match for the for Ireland. Uh, yeah, it was. It was just one of one of those games as well where it was just like surreal that it actually happened. Um, I think at half time, they got like three thirty. I think it was. So at half time, we, we sort of knew it was quite a it was quite a small ground. The ball was flying pretty quickly to the boundary. It it, it was a good wicket. Like we sort of knew we had a chance of if if we got off to a good start, which we actually didn't. I think we were we were probably ninety for five or something at one point maybe. So. I think it was, yeah, at that point we were thinking, well, we're probably going to struggle to win this game. And then obviously Kev, Kev had that fantastic uh, 100. Um, I, I, I still remember sitting in the dressing rooms with my pads on. I think I might have been, I was even next in or the wicked later, but I had, I had no interest in going out. Like I, I, like I wanted to see the game finished. Um, and yeah, it was, it was extra special that it was against England as well. Um, Obviously, because I knew so many of those guys playing county cricket, um, it was yeah, it was a great experience. And 2011, you also then after that tournament got picked for the England Lions. Mm -hmm. Now, what is, what is your mindset at that point? You're playing in major tournaments for Ireland. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they don't have Test match status as such. Yeah, um, Ireland still class as an associate nation. Was it always an ambition of yours to play for England just because of Test cricket, and or just talk me through your mindset uh, at that point? Yeah, I think at that point, yeah, I think I knew I was obviously doing well in terms of county cricket at that point as well, and it probably helped uh, have an Ashley Giles as the head coach here, who was an England selector at the same time. So he had sort of spoke to me about the opportunities of playing for England, he, f he felt that I could do that um, and I didn't see any reason why I couldn't do that either um, and it was it was purely down to the fact that I wanted to try and play at, at like the highest level which most like uh, professional like sportsmen want to do, they want to try and go to the peak and at that time obviously Ireland weren't playing test match uh, cricket. Um, we weren't probably playing regularly in terms of one day cricket either, so it was it was an opportunity for me to to play um, for a for a, for like a full member team. So 
Yeah, it was obviously dec- like, like, like it was obviously like really difficult at that time because I obviously still wanted to play for Ireland, um, but I knew that obviously I was playing for Ireland, playing for England Lions, uh, playing for Warwickshire. Um, and I was probably picking up a couple of injuries just off the back of playing so much cricket that I like I knew something had to give at some point. Um, and I wanted to really give it a shot in terms of playing test cricket for England. And obviously, like my only option at that point was to play for Warwickshire and try and play for England Lions to sort of force my way into playing for England. So obviously Ireland at that point, I had to sort of stop playing. Uh, 2012, I think it was, I stopped playing. So I think it was just purely down to the fact of I was playing so much cricket, uh, something had to give. And I, I wanted to try and play test cricket. So 2012, um, Warwickshire win the county championship. Mm-hmm. Do you think that it was the the best you were bowling? Um, because uh, you get that in the same year, you do get that England recognition as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I felt I'd been bowling well for a while. Like that 2011 season, I, I took over 50 wickets in the county championship. Um, that was probably my breakthrough year for Warwickshire in terms of obviously taking a lot of wickets, staying on the park for. Um, pretty much all season. Um, obviously 2012 was great, uh, playing playing in like a winning that kind of championship team. Um, but yeah, even yeah, even 2013 I, I, I felt I was I was bowling well, I was I was pretty fit, I was strong, everything was coming out really well at that point. And I suppose I was playing for England Lions in the winters and in the round those seasons as well. So and I was doing well for them. So I, I knew there was like a progression there to hopefully get the opportunity to to play for England at some point because I, I knew there wasn't many cricketers like me um, out there at that point. Um, obviously, like Stuart Broad, Stephen Finn, but um, I felt I was probably next to probably try and give it a go. So, yeah, it was obviously great to get that chance. And when you finally did make that decision to go full steam ahead, um, with England, did you face any kind of backlash uh, from anyone about your decision? To uh, probably. Like, I, I probably didn't look too much in it. In terms of the Irish players, they were all like really supportive with it. They obviously knew my reasons behind it, and yeah, I th- like they like they understood what what was going on. Um, pro- more so, probably the fans. They probably they probably couldn't maybe understand it as as the same way. But uh, yeah, it was, it was one of those. Like, I, I, uh, there's obviously going to be people that like the decision or like don't like the decision. So uh, it was uh, at the end of the day, I felt I was doing the right thing, and that was the only thing that really mattered. And then when you get given your um, debut in a 2020 match mm-hmm. against New Zealand, yeah, yeah, yeah. A proud moment. Yeah, yeah, it was a very proud moment. Uh, my mum actually flew over for the game as well, um, and it was obviously special. Uh, Owen Morgan was captain at the time. Um, I obviously know Owen like a long time, and. He 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 actually handed uh, my cap over to me. So, yeah, it was obviously a really special time. Um, it's one of those where I suppose you, you you like you look back on it now. It sort of obviously flew in, and you you probably didn't take it all in at the time. You're obviously concentrating on on like what you needed to do. But like looking back on it now, it was great. It was a packed house against New Zealand, and I, I managed to take a wicket in my first over. So. I couldn't. I couldn't have uh, gone any better, really. And then your 50 ever debut was against Ireland. Yeah, I think that that was probably the most uh, awkward, uh, I suppose, uh, like situation that I was in because Ireland was so special to me, uh, and I knew everybody in that team. Um, and going back to a ground that I played at like before as well having all my family there who um, were supporting me, but at the same time, they're, they're like Irish supporters. So it's, uh, yeah, it was a bit, it was very strange, um, but it, it was one of those that at the end of the day, I, I just looked at it at, at like another game of cricket and try to focus on what I'd been doing well to actually get there. So um, yeah, we managed, it was, it was, it was uh, quite a, interesting game and at, at one point we were like we were struggling but we managed to obviously win the game um, and I, I think I picked up four wickets in the game as well so from a personal point of view I, 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 like I felt I, I'd done well but at the same time playing against all my mates 
that I'm still meets with now is it was like, like was quite a quite like an interesting situation. And on the back of the the ODIs, you get selected for the Asher squads, the 2013-14 mm-hmm, yeah. Asher squad. How did that make you feel? You've now been selected um, in a Test match squad. Everything that you you know the, you were talked about the decision making yeah. to leave Ireland behind. Mm-hmm. Again, another proud moment. Yeah, yeah, it was massive. Asher Detroit. series away. Yeah, it was like it was one of those those um, those series that you really wanted to, to to like be involved in. You obviously watched it from a young age, and to be able to be in that position to be in that uh, to be in that squad to tour Australia. Yeah, it was it was like really special. Um, and yeah, it was like I felt that all those decisions that I had made, uh, obviously. I felt were the right decisions, and it sort of paid off um, in a way. Um, obviously, I had to work really hard to get to that point, and there was a lot of hurdles in the way. But yeah, it was it was really really special to get to that point. There was probably a lot of people that thought that I probably wouldn't have done that, um, but I always had that belief that if I can if I can stay in the park and and bowl as well as what I had been bowling during those previous uh, years, then there was no reason why I couldn't. And England lost that series 5-0. Yeah. Let's talk about yourself first of all. You get your opportunity in the last test match. Did you feel that you deserved an opportunity earlier when the series was alive? Uh, yeah, personally, like firstly, obviously it was a really tough tour. Um, and yeah, it was, it was quite a learning experience for me. Um, there was obviously a lot happening even off the field in terms of people retiring, people going home. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was it was it was one of those where I obviously had off the back of the ODIs in Australia, uh, or sorry, like against Australia in England, um, I felt I was born really well at that point. And leading into that series, the first Test match, I felt I had a really good opportunity to try and start that Test match. Um, I was in the the final twelve, and I I just missed out uh, over uh, Chris Tremlett. So it was it was one of those I felt like could could things have been different if I had played that first test match because I was probably more ready to play the te- that first test match than I was the final test match just through being there for three months bowling in the nets not really having a lot of opportunities to find my rhythm in like, match situations and then going into the test match with uh, with an injury as well that I picked up a couple of days before. Shoulder injury was it? Yeah, yeah, I, had a sh- I picked up a shoulder injury a couple of days before th- that game and it, it was one of those where I, I probably, like, I need, even though I'm really struggling, I felt that I might not get that th- that opportunity again. Um, so I thought I had to give it a go. Um, it obviously didn't turn out the way I would like it. Uh, I still felt I, I bowled reasonably well during during the test, considering how how much pain I was in. But yeah, it's one of those things where it, it probably it, like it didn't go to plan. Um, but yeah, like I've obviously learned a lot from it. Um, ideally, I would love to play more Test cricket for England, but like it wasn't to be. And yeah, as I said before, I think like everything happens for a reason, and it was one of those situations where. I would love it to have gone better, but like it is what it is, I suppose. In terms of the dressing room itself, that tour is very well documented. Mm-hmm. You mentioned retirement, Graham Swan going home, um, Kevin Peterson, his situation. Yeah. How was the atmosphere? Can you take us into the dressing room without giving too many secrets away? Uh, to, to be honest, I felt I felt the tour started off really well. Like everybody was in high spirits, um, and I felt the the actual squad gelled quite nicely together. Um, but obviously, straight after that first test, like we knew we were going to be in for a fight here, and like obviously Johnson was bowling uh, pretty quickly. Some wheels, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, and quite 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 like aggressively as well. So. We sort of knew at that point that it was going to be tough, um, and then obviously off the back of like Trotty going home. Um, at that point, um, obviously Swanee was was struggling as well with his elbow. Um, it it was a difficult place to be, even even more so like like away from cricket. Like you couldn't you couldn't really get away from it, even if you were 
walking down the street, there'd be somebody saying, oh, England are crap or whatever. Uh, you're constantly in, the, in that spotlight. So um, it, was, it, was, it was really difficult. And uh, yeah, in terms of the actual, the, like the squad, like, uh, as I said before, like, it, it gets to the point where obviously um, we were struggling especially against Johnson and we, we couldn't really work out a way to stop that um, and yeah, in many ways like I, I feel like for instance like KP he obviously gets a lot of bad press but like, I, I still remember him during that series taking the lower order away to try and help them face the, 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 face the short ball because they knew once like Johnson came in and once the tail end came in that he was going to be bowling short at them so um, like I, I can't really say a bad word about KP because I only had good things like from him, and I've and I've said that before. Um, I can understand he, he, like he does have a different personality to most, but like there, he was really good on that tour. Um, and uh, yeah, it obviously, like the more the tour went on, it felt obviously everybody was was really struggling and. It's just, it is, like I've been maybe not in that same situation before, but if you do manage to get into a run of losses, it, it, like it is quite difficult to get out of and losing senior players in that as well, it obviously makes it more difficult. So um, I, don't, I don't really have too many stories from inside the dressing room as much, really. Um, but yeah, I, we just felt that we we really we really sc struggled to come to terms with uh, with with their attack. And then you come home, you didn't get another opportunity with England again. How a frustration for you? Given uh, this, yeah, yeah, I thought, I yeah, I was like really frustrated. I, I, I was still I was still in in the round England Lions stuff uh, right up until. The summer of 2015. Um, uh, yeah, it was. It was really frustrating because I, I felt, even off the back of that tour, once I got myself fit again, I felt I was still bowling as well as ever. Um, and I went on a couple of Lions tours and and did really well in those. Um, and I felt I had a really good chance to to try and break back in again. Um, well, obviously, I didn't. I didn't get. I didn't get selected in that. And I sort of got to the point at the back end of. 15, 2015 season, I thought, well, I'm, I can't really see myself getting back in uh, to playing for uh, for England again. So I, I thought at that point it was probably the best uh, time to sort of move back to play for Ireland again. Obviously, I was still based here at Warwickshire, but I still wanted to try and um, go back and help them because they'd they'd done like pretty well up to that point and. They were maybe uh, crying out for a few fast bowlers at that point. So uh, yeah, like obviously, I like I really enjoyed my time with Ireland, and obviously the situation around that. Um, there was like decisions to be made, but I felt that was the right time to sort of move back. Um, you were welcomed back in. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It was uh, actually there were at, at one point there was maybe a possibility that I could have. Uh, played at the 2015 World Cup because um, they were they were quite keen at one point to try and try and make that happen. But I I just felt myself that it was, it was still a little bit too soon to move back. Uh, like I wanted to try and give it a like a decent length of time in terms of in terms of like the England situation. Um, but yeah, it was it was um, it was the right time for me and uh, things have things have obviously gone gone on really well since then. And then fast forward to 2018, Ireland's first test match mm -hmm. yeah. against Pakistan. Yeah. You know, you become one of, I think, 15 players to play test cricket for, for two countries. Um, talk me through your emotions at that time. Um, yeah, yeah. Especially when you're getting Ireland's first ever test wicket as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it, was, well, it was just another one of those situations where you never really thought it was going to happen, especially in, in like my playing career. I thought, I thought obviously I would love to see Ireland play test cricket at some point, um, but it probably came earlier than like a lot of people like thought. Um, 
but yeah, it, it was obviously a great experience, but it was slightly different for me, obviously, because I had already played like a test match, so it, it wasn't in theory my test debut, but it was for Ireland, obviously. Um, but watching the rest of those lads getting their first cap was was really special. It was quite a quite quite like an emotional um, ten minutes there where the lads were getting their caps like presented. Um, but yeah, it, as you said, like it was a surreal um, situation that that first day. The first day was actually washed out, so it was actually the second day that we started. Um, and yeah, to man, I don't, I wasn't even really thinking about it, but. Yeah, looking back on it now, obviously taking the first test wicket for Ireland um, is something. History. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, something, something really special, and to be able to, I suppose, be able to have that second chance of like playing test cricket um, off the back of the first time, feeling that I could have done a lot more and probably have had more opportunities to to then be able to do that again with Ireland and sort of showcase what I can do, even though, yeah, it was a few years later, but I still felt I was bowling well. And um, yeah, it was obviously great to, to sort of play that test match for for Ireland and up till, well, there was one point where on the last day, we, we still had a chance of obviously winning the game. And then 2019, the summer that's just gone, the test match at Lords against England. Yeah. Again, yeah, facing up against England. <laughs> Yeah, you can't really script it, can you? Yeah. It's uh, one of those situations where I was like, I can't. I, there's no way this is going to happen, and then it does. Yeah, um, yeah it was. It was as, uh, the same again. I go back to that uh, debut that I had against Ireland when I played for England. It was sort of a similar situation to that because I knew all the England lads pretty well at that point because I had played with them for England and the Lions and stuff. So um, yeah, it was. It was. It was pretty like, emotional as well. Like playing at the home of cricket at Lords was was so special to to like be able to do that. Like everybody was just so excited, and that that first morning walking through the long room, out onto the field, like everybody was just like really emotional. And then what what happened that first session? I I still don't know. Um, but yeah, it obviously happened. Um, yeah, you knock them over for 85. Yeah. Murder, five for, yeah. You get you get a couple of wickets yeah. yourself. So it was just it, it felt like it was just meant to be. Like the wicket was a little green tinge to the wicket was which was perfect for Mertz. He he obviously had played at Middlesex for X amount of years and he, he's a he's like a seasoned pro and he, he knew exactly what he needed to do. I'm sure there was nerves there before that first ball was bowled, but Mertz is a pretty cool customer and uh, yeah he obviously showed his showed his uh, his like uh, skills that day. But a missed opportunity, you go on to lose obviously the test match mm -hmm. Having got the great start, knocking them over for eighty-five, as you said. Yeah, yeah. There, we obviously had great opportunities to, to like to win that test match. Um, I think, I, like ideally, we would like to have a few more runs uh, from our in terms of the first innings from ourselves. Um, I felt we were in, obviously in a great position. We were one hundred and twenty for one, I think, at one point. Um, so uh, yeah, we probably missed an opportunity to there to maybe get three hundred. Um, and then they obviously played well the second innings. Um, it was extremely hot those few days as well, so it was quite tough. It was quite tough on the bowlers, and I think we like we toiled away really well and, and managed to still keep it to what 160. I think we were chasing it uh, uh, in in terms of the end up. But I think at that point, I, st I still felt we had a great opportunity to win the game. Um, uh, yeah, turning up on that fourth morning, really overcast conditions with the floodlights on, we, we sort of knew it was going to be uh, tough going against Alexa, Wokesy, uh, uh, Stuart Broad, uh, Ollie Stone. We sort of knew we were going to be, um, that it was going to be a really tough battle for us to get those runs in, in those conditions. Um, it obviously went pear-shaped at that point. Um, we got 30 odd. But yeah, it, it, like it is what it is. I, we obviously had great opportunities in that to to obviously win the game. It wasn't meant to be, um, but I think like we sort of showcased our skills again on the world stage that like we can play against the best teams and 
as long as we get those opportunities moving forward, I think it'll help Irish cricket um, to actually get to the next level. Um, and yeah, I think it'll live in the memory of a lot of those lads that played that test match. And then domestically, um, you're going to become Ireland's first overseas player, given mm -hmm. the fact that now you've got test match status. Um, that is a situation now um, yeah. players find themselves in. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, it's well documented, Tim, to having, you know, having to retire from international cricket to concentrate playing for, for Middlesex. So that's the yeah. decision he's made. Yeah. Um, talk us through this situation. Uh, I'm not really sure what to say, really. It's obviously one of those situations where you can, you can see why it, it had to be done, but it still doesn't really make a lot of sense, especially with the likes of Mertz, the likes of myself, who are born and bred in the UK, um, have a British passport all our life, but we can't work in England. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky situation to be in. And uh, yeah, they, like the ECB obviously have, have like made that decision. Um, but it is like, like it is tough. Obviously, Mertz has the, had to make that decision to, to like stay at Middlesex um, purely because of that rule. Um, and there's all of us as well, Paul Sterling, uh, like myself, uh, Stuart Pointer. They're, 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 like, there's quite a few guys that obviously that affected. And I suppose the biggest thing moving forward with that was a lot of our cricketers who played county cricket for 10 plus years learned a lot from playing county cricket. And now that opportunity is being taken away for the younger lads that are coming through. So I suppose it, it gives cricket in Ireland an opportunity to try and uh, make our own young cricketers from the system that that, 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 that we've got uh, in terms of back in Ireland so but I suppose that comes down to try and get trying to get better facilities because obviously there's a lot of really good facilities here in England if you just look at this ground like it's amazing to have this and to be able to play here for the last 10 years has really helped my cricket so yeah I think it's going to be tough for the next generation of young Irish cricketers not being able to play county cricket um, but yeah hopefully we can we can sort of like we, we, we can bridge that gap with uh, with in terms of the first class cricket that we have back in Ireland. So in terms of domestically next year obviously you became the overseas player I forgot to mention before you back to Derbyshire yeah, um, yeah. but next year what is the plan? Uh, the plan at the moment is just I've got uh, I've got a contract with Ireland, a uh, full-time contract. So we have we've just got a lot of cricket coming up. We like, we head to the West Indies in a few weeks' time. We've got a, a three ODI, three T20 series out there. Um, we've got a test in Sri Lanka shortly after that. Um, we're in India and then Zimbabwe. So the first four months of the year is is is, uh, is pretty hectic. Um, and then our home season. Uh, we're hoping, obviously, with the new T20 Slam, that's going to go ahead. Um, we've got Bangladesh coming, we've got New Zealand coming, um, and then obviously the back end of the, our season, we're back in England to play England in, uh, in like three, three, three like ODIs. So, as I say, and that's not including obviously we're going to Australia for the T20 World Cup straight after that. So. There's obviously a lot of cricket there coming uh, in terms of next year, and it's obviously really exciting um, in terms of being like a being like an Irish cricketer because there is there is so much cricket now because we're part of like the Future Tours program from next year, I think it is. So um, it's obviously great to have that opportunity now to to sort of play series against a lot of the top teams, and I think that'll help us and uh, sort of like stand us in good stead moving forward. Perfect. Now, Boyd, thank you for your time today. Um, all the Pleasure. best uh, with the winter coming up. And you said you've got a busy schedule ahead and wish you injury free and, and all the best. Cheers. Thank you. So, Neil Kagram, Cricket Last Stories, Boyd Rankin. Thank you. No problem. Cheers. Yeah.